in the previous lecture we introduced uh, to you what kw was so i'll briefly reintroduce uh, what kw was that water dissociates or ionizes very weakly and it produces h plus 1 and oh minus 1 ion so a reversible reaction is set up in water and water is uh, it ionizes very very weakly the concentration of h plus 1 ions in, uh, in water at room temperature standard temperature and pressure is 1 into 10 to the power minus 7 mole per decimeter cube uh, similarly the concentration of OH ions is also exactly the same because uh, both ions are produced in equal quantities according to the ratios in the equation so uh, water dis ionizes very very weakly produces very few H plus 1 and OH ions the water constant KW was the product of the concentration of H plus 1 uh, into the concentration of OH minus 1 so it was an equilibrium constant uh, uh, it was the concentration of products which are these two divided by the concentration of reactants but since water was in large excess we took that as a constant so KW was simply the product of the concentration of H plus 1 ions multiplied by the uh, concentration of OH minus 1 ions and the value of KW was uh, at 25 degrees centigrade standard temperature and pressure it was always going to be equal to 1 into 10 raised to the power minus 14 uh, mole squared dm minus 6 because concentration is being multiplied by concentration the reason it's 1 into 10 to the power minus 14 is the concentration of h plus 1 is 1 into 10 to the power minus 7 the concentration of 4h minus 1 is also exactly the same so this is what we discussed last time this is equilibrium constant h plus 1 multiplied by oh minus 1 and i told you that the value of kw is always going to remain a constant it only changes with temperature uh, no other changes in uh, concentration or in pressure is going to affect this value of kw now the next thing that i'm going to try and do is i'm going to link this value of kw and this equation where water ionizes and produces h plus 1 and oh minus 1 i'm going to uh, link this with our concept of acids and bases now when we discussed acids acids are defined as uh, species molecules or uh, compounds that are proton donors proton donors a proton term refers to h plus 1 ions because in an h plus 1 ions there's only one proton so acids are any compounds that produce h plus 1 ions and uh, whenever you mix uh, uh, an acid into uh, into water it's going to break down and it's going to produce these h plus 1 ions for example i have an hcl molecule if i add an hcl uh, molecule and dissolve it in water it still becomes aqueous which basically means that it uh, ionizes and ends up producing H plus 1 ions and also Cl minus 1 ions but I'm not interested in the other ion I'm basically interested in this uh, H plus 1 ions all acids they end up producing H plus 1 ions when you mix them in water in a similar way if you have uh, sulfuric acid that's also an acid H2SO4 uh, you mix it in water it becomes aqueous it's also going to dissociate, ionize, it's going to break down, it's going to produce 2 H plus 1 ions and 1 SO4 minus 2 ions. Now these are strong acids, these are examples of strong acids. Similarly, you can also have weak acids, for example, ethanoic acid. Uh, most organic acids uh, containing carbon are generally classified as weak acids. If you dissolve ethanoic acid, then it's also going to break down, it's going to produce H plus 1 ions but not completely uh, it's a weak acid it ionizes weakly so it produces only a few uh, each plus one ions but what is common is uh, I'm not really interested in uh, whether an acid is a strong acid or a weak acid what I'm interested in is that they all end up producing these H plus one ions whether they produce more H plus one ions or they produce less H plus one ions that depends on the strength of the acid they can be weak acids, they can be strong acids. Now, here's the important part. I'm going to link this with our dissociation constant Kw. As you can see, we already discussed that water, liquid water, uh, produces H plus 1 and OH ions. But water, when it dissociates or ionizes, it produces H plus 1 and OH ions in exactly equal quantity. And this is what we call a neutral solution. In a neutral solution, the quantity of H plus 1 and the quantity of OH minus 1 is exactly equal but if you start adding an acid to water acids they start producing these h plus 1 ions and if they start producing protons or h plus 1 ions then the quantity of h plus 1 in the solution would start to 
increase. It would start to drastically increase because the acid is a molecule that produces ACE plus 9. So your water is now going to have significantly, significantly higher concentration of ACE plus 9s. Vice versa, uh, the OH ions in acidic conditions would start to get neutralized by the ACE plus 1, uh, which basically means that the equilibrium is going to shift backwards. As you keep on increasing the concentration of H plus 1 ions, uh, the equilibrium would try to decrease the concentration and the equilibrium would shift uh, to the left, which as a result would decrease the quantity of OH ions. So if you try to increase, if you start adding acid to water, the H plus 1 ions in the solution would start to increase, but simultaneously the OH ions, some of the H plus 1 ions are going to combine with the OH ions and they're going to produce water molecules. So the quantity of OH ions, they would start to decrease. So increasing one decreases the other ion. But if you relate this to your equilibrium constant, if you look at your equilibrium constant expression, as I've uh, already told you, uh, you increase the concentration of H plus 1 ion in solution by adding an acid. Uh, then simultaneously, if you try to increase the concentration of H plus 1 ions, simultaneously the concentration of OH ions would start to decrease. Uh, but there would be no effect on the equilibrium constant. If H plus 1 increases, the OH minus 1 decreases, but the product is going to remain exactly the same, which is 1 into 10 is power minus 14. So if you have an acidic mixture, uh, there's more H plus 1 ions and there is less OH ions in the solution. The reason why there are more H plus 1 ions is because the acids are producing all these H plus 1 ions. So acidic solutions have more H plus 1 ions. Simultaneously, the OH ions in acidic solutions are fewer in number. But the product is going to remain exactly the same, which is 1 into 10 is power minus 14. Vice versa, the opposite of acids are bases. Bases are proton acceptors, acceptors or they gain H plus 1 ions. Or vice versa, they release OH ions. Uh, whenever you add a base uh, to a solution, bases are going to decrease the quantity of H plus 1 ions and they're going to increase the quantity of OH ions. So they're species or substances that usually produce OH ions or vice versa, they, they reduce the amount of H plus 1 ions. So for example, I have a base which is uh, NaOH. Uh, NaOH is, uh, is, is a very strong base. It's a, it's a strong alkali. It, uh, what, it does, what it does is that it uh, dissociates and produces, ends up producing Na plus and OH minus 1 ions. So if you put a put a base like any OH uh, in water, these would be in aqueous state, uh, both ions would be in aqueous state mixed in water. So if you if you put a base in water, um, like any OH, uh, the quantity of uh, OH ions would start to, it would start to increase and the quantity of H plus 1 vice versa would start to decrease because the H plus 1 ions would get neutralized or if you, or you can uh, look at the Lee Shatler principle, if you increase the concentration of OH minus 1, the equilibrium is going to move in the backward direction. If it moves in the backward direction, then the quantity of H plus 1 would be even lower than before. Uh, previously, in a neutral solution, the concentration was 1 into 10 to minus 7 mole per decimeter cube. But if you start to increase the concentration of OH ions, the equilibrium would start to shift in the backward direction, which would result in, a, in an even lower concentration of H plus 1 ions. Let me give you a, an example of a few more bases. For example, I have... Uh, I have barium hydroxide, which is also a strong alkali. Uh, remember, alkalis are those bases that are that are soluble in water. Alkalis usually produce OH ions. So barium hydroxide is also a strong alkali. It ends up producing barium 2 plus ions plus 2 OH minus 1 ions, and they would be in aqueous state as well. And let's take the example of a, of a weak base uh, like NH3. Uh, NH3 is a weak base, almost all nitrogen bases that contain nitrogen are weak bases. N has these lone pairs on nitrogen which uh, attract H plus 1 ion. So if you mix it in water, uh, the H plus 1 uh, in NH3 is, NH3 is going to attract that H plus 1 and ends up forming NH4 plus 1 and releasing, releases an OH ion as a result and they would be in aqueous state, water would be liquid. And NH3 in its original state is a gas when it's not mixed in water. So to summarize what's happening, uh, adding an alkali or a base would increase the quantity of OH ions in water in the solution and vice versa simultaneously decrease the quantity of H plus 1 ions. 
but your product, your KW or equilibrium co constant for water is going to remain exactly the same. The OH ion concentration increases, the H plus 1 concentration decreases, but the product would still be equal to 1 into 10 to the power minus 14. One value increases, one value decreases, but the product remains exactly the same. So uh, let's summarize this now. The first solution that we discussed was a neutral solution. In a neutral solution, the quantity of H plus 1, the concentration of H plus 1 and the concentration of OH minus 1 is equal. So for example, water is a neutral solution. Water dissociates, ionizes and produces equal amounts of H plus 1 and equal amounts of OH minus 1s. The second type of solution that we discussed was an acidic solution. If you add an acid to water, if you mix an acid with water, Acids produce H plus 1 ions, uh, so you'll have more H plus 1. The concentration of H plus 1 is going to go higher and the concentration of OH minus 1 would become lower. So uh, in an acidic solution, you'll have more H plus 1 ions and you'll have uh, fewer OH minus 1 ions. And the third type of solution that we discussed was a basic solution. Basis is was species that uh, gained H plus 1 ions or removed or removed H plus 9, so the quantity of H plus 9s would decrease and vice versa, the quantity of OH ions would increase. So when you add a base to a solution, uh, uh, remember it should be a soluble base that mixes with water, uh, the quantity of H plus 1 uh, decreases because bases accept H plus 1 ions and vice versa, they also produce OH ions, most of them alkalis, they produce OH ions, so the quantity of OH ions in water would start to increase and the solution would become Basic. So you have three types of solutions. Neutral solution, where water has equal quantity of H plus 1 and OH minus 1. Acidic solution, where the H plus 1 quantity concentration is higher and the OH ion concentration is lower. And a basic solution, where the H plus 1 concentration is lower and the OH ion concentration is higher. But in all three cases, uh, KW or the water constant, the product of the concentration of H plus 1 and the product of the con into the concentration of OH minus 1, that product is going to remain a constant which is going to be 1 into 10 raised to the power minus 14 mole squared dm minus 6. This would be the unit concentration multiplied by concentration. So the constant is going to remain a constant. It only varies with temperature. So whether it's a neutral solution, the concentration of H plus 1 and OH minus 1 is going to be exactly equal. Uh, but the product is going to be 1 into 10 to the power minus 14. If it's an acidic solution, then H plus 1 would be higher and OH minus 1 would be lower. But the product would still remain equal to 1 into 10 to the power minus 14. Or whether it's a basic solution where the quantity of H plus 1 is going to be lower and the quantity of OH ion is going to be higher but the product would still be equal to 1 into 10 to the power minus 14. So this is the importance of KW. It doesn't matter whether the solution is neutral. It doesn't ma matter whether the solution or the, is acidic or whether the solution is basic. KW maintains its value, which is 1 into 10 to the power minus 14 at standard temperature and pressure. Now, the real advantage of this constant KW is that if you know the concentration of H plus 1 in a solution, uh, using this expression, you can find out the concentration of OH minus 1, which would be the unknown concentration. Vice versa, if you know the concentration of OH minus 1 in a solution, you can figure out the concentration of H plus 1. So at any given time, if you know either one of these two values, using this expression, you can find the concentration of the other ion. So as an example, I have uh, a solution where the concentration of H plus 1 is known, which is 0.1 mole per decimeter cube. And I want to find the concentration of OH ions. Uh, and remember, this is happening under standard conditions and uh, temperature and pressure. So I know the concentration of H plus 1. I'm simply going to use this expression and put these values in this expression. So the concentration of H plus 1 is 0 0.1. So that is your H plus 1 concentration. The concentration of OH minus 1 is unknown. So KW is the product of the two values. The concentration of H plus 1 multiplied by the concentration of OH minus 1. And this should be equal to 1 into 10 to the power minus 14. So it should be equal to 1 into 10 to the power minus 14, which is the value of KW. And if you solve for OH minus 1, uh, the answer that you're going to get is going to be 1 into 10 raised to the power minus 13 mole per decimeter cube. So this would be the concentration of OH ions. So if you have a fairly acidic solution where the concentration of H plus 1 is very high, 
the concentration of OH ions is vice versa very very low. 1 into 10 is power minus 13 is extremely low. That means it's decimal followed by 12 zeros and then 1. So this is very low concentration. So highly acidic solution would have uh, uh, very few OH ions in it. Vice versa, let's uh, do an example uh, where the concentration of OH ions is known. So for example, in this example, the concentration of OH minus 1 is known. Uh, it's 0.2 mole per decimeter cube and we need to find the concentration of H plus 1 and let's assume that the reaction or uh, the solution is in standard conditions. So uh, uh, the concentration of H plus 1 is known. I'm going to put this in the expression of uh, Kw. The concentration of OH ions is known, so that's 0.2. And the value, the product of H plus 1 and OH minus 1 should be equal to 1 into 10 is for minus, minus 14 uh, mole squared dm minus 6. And we uh, make H plus 1 the subject of the equation. And the value that we are going to get is 5 into 10 raised to the power minus 14 mole per dm cube per decimeter cube. So vice versa, if the concentration of OH minus 1 is very high, it's an alkaline solution, so the concentration of H plus 1 is going to be very, very low, which in this case comes out to be 5 into 10 is power minus 14. Minus 14 means that there would be 13 zeros after a decimal, so the concentration of H plus 1 is extremely, extremely low.